let's turn briefly then to what you called uh, part of his mixed record, President Obama, the use of drones, perhaps the so-called surveillance state of late. Of course, we're looking at a number of recommendations uh, for Mr. Obama to review the working of the National Security Agency after leaks by contractor um, Edward Snowden. So back to you, Tony Arendt. Um, where are we going in that direction? Okay, let me talk about NSA, and I know uh, Ambassador Lagan does a lot on drones, so I maybe let him pick up on, on drones. Uh, the National Security Agency, and in interest of full disclosure, my mother worked for 13 years as a linguist at the National Security Agency, so just to, to, to get that on the record, although that was many, many years ago, I think what Edward Snowden has done has been a disaster for U.S. foreign policy, for the integrity of the country, and for the efficacy of the U.S. intelligence community. Uh, my sense is that if he had a concern, there were internal channels that he should have used. He should have gone to the inspector general's office. He could have gone to the general counsel's office. He could have even taken it to the, the committees on the House before he disclosed this information. I take it you're not uh, in favor of amnesty for Edward Snowden. Well, the only way I would favor amnesty for Edward Snowden, and this is what some have suggested, I don't know what he has. You know, anytime you engage, whether it's with a, with a, a mafia figure or a, a general criminal, if they have something that they can exchange. So I don't want to take that completely off, off the table. Uh, that having been said, I think it's always useful to examine the role that NSA is playing. And the recommendations have come forward to President Obama. My understanding is he's going to be making some decisions based on those recommendations. And I, I, th I think that would be useful. Much of what Snowden disclosed were operations that were done pursuant to federal law authorized by a federal judge on the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. So it wasn't that he was disclosing necessarily illegal activities. He was disclosing something that was lawful, that was decided by the policymakers empowered by the United States citizenry to make these decisions. So what perhaps needs to happen is for some discussion and review of those specific policies. And, and, and I, I, favor, I favor that. I think the ominous side of any of this is that the technology can get out of control, meaning because you can do something, you will do something. And so I think strong restrictions, strong checks do need to be established in that regard. The one thing that worries me most about the whole issue is that the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, again, these are federal judges that have already been confirmed by the Senate, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court makes decisions in a classified fashion. So orders are issued and opinions are issued that are classified, that are never made public. My main concern is that there is a jurisprudence, there is an interpretation of the law that is developing in this classified court that we don't know about. That is unusual. Law is supposed to be public. Legal decisions are supposed to be public so we can understand what the jurisprudence is. So that concerns me. That's something that concerns me. And there are efforts to perhaps change that, including putting an advocate who would be able to argue before the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court to present other views. I think something like that would be a useful thing to do. Turning to you, Ambassador Lagon. To add or subtract uh, with regard to the NSA leaks, which of course rattled many of our allies from Brazil to, uh, to Angela Merkel of, of Germany, the impact this is having on our foreign policy, as well as the drone issue, which of course doesn't please the Pakistanis. But at the same time, we can see positive aspects of both of these policies. How do you strike the balance? Earlier, Tony said that there are actually a remarkable number of similarities between George W. Bush and and. Um, President Obama, and this is one of those examples, and I think there's a, a certain degree to which there may be some dangers uh, or excesses of counterterrorism policy, um, unintended consequences. Uh, I think it's true that if you have a technology, you may use it, uh, uh, and it, it may become a temptation, and drones uh, is a classic example. It may be that drones um, help you avoid collateral damage to harming civilians in a way that earlier technologies don't. But if you have a capacity for taking out people at a great distance, there may be a temptation to use it in a way that ends up harming civilians. Um, the Probably the most uh, important political scientist in the United States in the last half century, Samuel Huntington, said in one of his lesser-known books, American Politics, The Promise of Disarmament, 
when there is a gap between the ideals and the institutions of the U.S. government, there's inevitable change. And I think you may find that the lack of transparency, both in the NSA policies and on decision-making about drones, may lead to a demand not just from our allies, but indeed from American citizens to rethink, are we changing as a society as we're trying to protect security and um, promote freedom in the world? Is freedom uh, being corroded a bit at home?